here now with more. Paul Holes, newly retired Contra Costa County cold case investigator who worked on the Golden State Killer case for the last 24 years, 10 years of that exclusively on this case. Paul, tell me what this means to you, this apprehension. Uh, it's absolutely huge. After nearly a quarter of a century trying to find this guy, to actually see him after all these years of wondering who he was, it's an amazing moment. And I think it's an amazing moment for all the victims to finally know that this guy who's been out there all this time is in custody. He won't ever get out and they can now feel safe. How did they find him in the end? In the end, it was leveraging new DNA technology and using uh, DNA technology that could produce leads that allows gumshoe investigation to follow up on. And ultimately, that led to a smaller pool of suspects, and then he emerged as the number one priority. You know, did you know, when you were looking at, at his profile, did you know that because he was so good at covering his tracks, did you suspect that he might be law enforcement? You know, there's, there's been theories over the years that he could have had law enforcement and or military training. Uh, you know, from my assessment, I always saw him as a, a, a sophisticated and intelligent offender, but I didn't necessarily think that it meant that he had to be law enforcement. Now that we know he was law enforcement and then taking a look at the details in the case file, it adds up. Yeah. He had training. He understood law enforcement techniques. I know that you say that he would change his routine. So when there was an article in the newspaper that said he only attacks women who are alone, he read that. And then the next attack he did when a man was in the house, right? I mean, he constantly kept changing his game. Exactly. And in, in, in part, he was changing his game to try to you know, throw off law enforcement by making misleading statements or doing certain types of behaviors or actions that would make us think he's somebody different than what, who he was. Yeah. But he also was somebody that responded. And so that instance, if he reads an article in the newspaper that well, he only attacks when there's no man present, he's feeling challenged. Right. And so he took that challenge and, and, and upped the ante and attacked when a man was present. Yeah, the other thing that fascinates me is the, the dog repellent. He stole that. Do, was he using that to you know, fend off a dog when he was trying to get into a house? And, and could that have been a bigger clue back then? You know, we, we have no instance in which he knowingly used dog repellent. He most certainly could have, uh, you know, either ahead of time to try to uh, sensitize these dogs to who he was and fear him so they would not aggressively come after him when he attacked. Mm -hmm. uh, he had some uh, kind of an unusual, uncanny ability to uh, control the dogs in these mm -hmm. residents, whether they be in the, wow. the yard or inside the house. Um, two last things. When you look at potentially the motive, why you think that he was doing this. And also, were you told anything about what his reaction was when the police closed in on him yesterday or last night? Uh, well, in terms of his reaction, he, he was uh, taken into custody very rapidly. Uh, he was stunned and he most certainly understood the gravity of, of being in custody. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I directly observed that. Mm -hmm. The, uh, the, the motive of why he was doing these crimes, these horrific crimes, it is unknown at this point in time. There's a lot we don't know about him right now, and there's a lot more investigation into him, his background, and where he was during the, the, the various attacks through yeah. Northern California down to Southern California. I mean, it's amazing. He, he called one of his victims 20-something years later on the phone. I mean, he obviously is a twisted individual, which is apparent from all of this. But congratulations to you, Paul, and everybody else who worked this case. This is a huge, uh, a huge finding here tonight. And we thank you very much for talking with us. Good to see you, sir.